Hey guys, I know it's been a while, but we're finally back with our in-depth video reviews for Scorecast Online. In keeping with tradition, I suppose I better get things started right. I'm EP, and this is Spotlight On. Lock it up. Ready. After such a long hiatus, we wanted to kickstart this series with a composing tool that's truly making a difference right now in the sample library world. Winning major acclaim for their first release, Rev, Output's latest product, Signal, a pulse-driven sample library, is receiving rave reviews from DJs, music producers, and composers alike. With 500 pulse instruments, up to four separate pulses being used at once, a variety of effects, and 40 gigs worth of content, there's so much to talk about with Signal. Good thing for us, we have our very own Stelita Lucas, an amazing film composer and sound designer, who's going to walk us through this library. Let's begin. Output is a team of developers specializing in the creation of unique and innovative sample libraries. Following the success of their highly acclaimed first library, Rev, which was a tribute to reverse sound, they have now released Signal, a library that takes the art of creating pulses to a whole new level. Signal is a contact-based library that runs on both the full version and the free player of Contact 5. The main philosophy behind it is taking various signal sources, both organic and synthesized, running them through the two uniquely designed pulse engine, and polishing the final sound using any combination of the onboard effect. Let's now have a look at some of the features that make Signal a unique library. The raw materials called sound sources have all been recorded in multi-velocity layers and comprise of a large range of real organic instruments and synthesized sounds to suit all tastes. Signal is the only library in the market featuring dual arpeggiators that can be tweaked and combined in a myriad different ways. To further shape your sound, Signal offers an array of high-quality onboard effects, including a convolution reverb unit with unique impulse responses recorded especially by the output team. Signal also includes a unique looper feature that simulates a tape loop on any given sound. And last but not least, Signal is a library of many faces. While it has been primarily designed to create elaborate pulsing sounds, any given sound source or preset can also be used as a playable instrument at the press of a button. The entire signal library comprises of just a single contact instrument patch. All sounds and presets are accessible via clearly laid out and well-organized user interface. As you all probably know, the best way to get acquainted with a new library is to try out the presets. To access the 500 presets that come with Signal, click on the preset name at the top center of the interface. The presets have been organized based on an intuitive tagging system. Simply click on the tabs describing the kind of sound you're after and the filtered results will be displayed on the right hand side. Now let's talk about the raw materials of this library called Sound Sources. The end result you hear when pressing a key on your keyboard is just the final step of a series of creative and complex routings of two sound sources. You can select a sound source by clicking on the appropriate icon and as you can see you have a vast amount of choices of both organic instrumental and synth sources. One of the beauties of Signal is that you can choose a different sound source for each of the two pulse engine, essentially creating a deeply layered sound. At the heart of Signal lie of course the two pulse engines. The sound source that you have selected passes through the corresponding pulse engine which utilizes not one but two different rhythmic manipulation devices. You can choose what type of rhythm to use from a variety of options and you can also set the pulse rate for each rhythm individually. If you wish to create a simpler sound with less layers, 
You can always turn off a pulse engine sound source or rhythm by clicking on the corresponding power switch. The advanced tab gives you access to a host of new sound mangling possibilities. Each pulse engine features six rhythm sense effects which can receive signal from either or both rhythms. Some effects are standard such as volume, panning and filter resonance, while others such as filter, tube and bite can be further shaped by clicking on the button to access the effect controls. The filter, tube and bite effects can also be disabled by clicking on the power switch button. Controlling the level of each rhythm sent to each of these effects is just a matter of clicking and dragging your mouse inside the corresponding icon. The advanced panel also features extensive envelope controls to further shape your sound to taste. These controls can be used to control either the volume or pitch envelope. Keep in mind that pitch envelope controls are only available in some rhythm types. Following the pulse engines, the sound inside signal then passes through a series of high-quality onboard effects that you can tweak and customize to suit your needs. You can access the effects panel by clicking on the effects button on the top left of the user interface. The effects are neatly organized into two categories, global and pulse specific. The global tab allows you to use up to nine different effects including a high-quality convolution reverb with impulses recorded by the output team. By clicking on either the Pulse A or Pulse B tab, you gain access to the Pulse-specific effects that are separate from the global ones and can be turned on and off individually for each Pulse engine by clicking on the relevant Power Switch button. The real beauty of this library lies in the so-called macros. The output team has taken a fantastic product and pushed it a step further. These four sliders are intuitively programmed to control the most important aspects of each individual sound preset, and they are uniquely set for each different sound. Each of these four macros can be assigned to a knob or slider on your MIDI controller and can be automated to create an evolving sound throughout your track. While the macros have been expertly set by the output team, you can control exactly what each macro does and to what extent. To do that, click on the Macro Settings button and you will gain access to the Settings panel. To tweak each individual macro slider, simply click on the corresponding button and all controls and effects associated with it will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. Remember, everything green corresponds to Pulse Engine A and everything yellow corresponds to Pulse Engine B. The green and red lines represent the two ends of the control range and are conveniently displayed on both the slider and the control so that you know exactly what you're doing. If at any point you're unsure as to how to do something or what a particular slider or knob does, you can access one of the most intuitive user manuals I've seen to date by clicking on the question mark at the top right of the interface. Instead of writing a lengthy user manual, the output team has really made an effort to make this library easy to use by providing tooltips directly displayed on the GUI. Signal is one of those libraries for which the term plug and play is a perfect fit. Load the contact patch, press a note or chord on your keyboard and voila, you have an instantly usable sound which you can easily incorporate into your next project. However, here at Scorecast we have secured some heavily guarded secrets to help you get the best out of Signal. First of all, the output team recommends that as soon as you load Signal for the first time, do a batch resave as this significantly speeds up loading time. There are two ways to use Signal. If you want to use Signal to create pulsing sound, it's best to play sustained single notes or chords and use the sustain pedal extensively to help you. If, on the other hand, you wish to use Signal as a synth for playing melodic lines, you can disable both pulse engines by clicking on the Signal logo in the middle of the interface. Even if the pulse engines have been deactivated, you can still use some of the macros and all of the onboard effects. Finally, 
automation is a must when using Signal. Almost everything you see on the interface is easily automatable, with first and foremost being the four macro sliders. Instead of creating one full-length track and running it through it, I prefer to create a number of shorter and smaller scale ones in different styles in order to show you how versatile Signal really is. The first example is a typical EDM track. Aside from a couple of drum loops that I just dropped in the project to give a sense of rhythm, all the other elements are exclusively made with Signal. And by the way, I have absolutely zero processing plugins running, so what you hear is what you get straight out of the box. Let's listen to the track once and I'll explain what I did. I am running five instances of Signal, covering the basic elements of an EDM track. Remember that EDM music is characterized, among others, by tons of automation such as the opening and closing of filters and reverb sends, lots of black sounds layered together, and a lot of side chaining. So for the bass sound, I am using the tight plug preset, and I am automating the wet dry macro to give the sense of an evolving sound. For the harmony, I am using yet another instance of the tie plug preset, and I am automating the open-closed macro that is essentially the opening and closing of a filter, which, as we mentioned, is a very common effect used in electronic dance music track. Black sounds are extremely popular in many genres of EDM, and Signal is full of them. Here, I am using the retro analog presets with both pulse engines deactivated, and I have opted to play in the rhythm myself. Again, I am using automation, but this time on the filter cutoff of the global effects. Another very popular technique used in EDM is side chaining or the so called ducking. Signal offers an entire category of side chain sounds which you can find under the side chain tags in the presets menu. Here I am using the side chain supersol preset and I am automating the stereo image of both false engines ever so slightly. The final layer is made of the diverging guitar preset where both pulse engines are again disabled and I have played in the rhythm myself. The automation this time is controlling the wet dry amount of the reverb, again another common technique used in EDM. As you saw yourself, with very few instances we have created a very solid backbone for an electronic dance music track. For the next example, let's go to something darker and creepier. Again, I am using just five instances of Signal and I have absolutely zero processing plugins running. Let's listen to the track and I'll walk you through it. The first layer is the Submarine Mine preset, which I use to create a super low pulse that drives the entire track.
To add to the sense of urgency and imminent danger, I added another pulsing bass sound, this time a little higher register and more gritty, and I automated the first two macros to add variation to the sound. The third layer uses the catacombs of Machina preset, and I am using the fourth macro slider to alternate between the two rhythm settings of each pulse engine. For the next layer, I use the Terrifying Night preset, and since I wanted more of an ambient sound designy kind of sound, I turned off the second pulse engine and automated the third macro slider to gradually increase the detuning of the sound and make the track more uncomfortable. Finally, I wanted another layer of out-of-tune sound, but this time a little higher in the frequency range. I used the China Sound preset, which was great for this, and changed the second sound source to a metal guitar for an even creepier sound. <laughs> With just five instances of signal, you can easily create what can very well serve as the basis of a dark and gritty track for your next film, music library or game project. Despite its dark interface, signal can create beautiful and light sounds equally easily. Here is a quick example of a light ambient track using again five instances of signal and all of them use presets as a starting point with absolutely zero processing plugins added. Finally, I wanted to show you how easily I was able to incorporate signal in an already finished composition. I had a heavy hybrid orchestral track that I wanted to add some grit and movement to. Since the track was already mixed and stemmed out, and I wouldn't have a lot of room for maneuver to make signal fit, I thought it was a great test to see how signal would sit in the mix. Let's listen to the beginning of the track and I'll explain why and how I chose to use signal. So while I like how it starts relatively subtly and slowly builds, I am missing a bit of low-end pulse here. Since, however, there are already a lot of low-end elements present, I wanted a low pulse with some grit to it, so that it would cut through the mix without masking the percussion and low strings. So I turned to my favorite preset, which I'm sure by now you know it's tight block, and here's how this sounds on its own. And here's the beginning of the track with the pulse added. I layered this pulse with another one playing a very similar rhythm but using a much more percussive sound that would help it cut through the mix better for the denser parts of the track. 
Since this is a rather low-end sound, I increase the Sarah spread a bit to free up some room in the center for the bass frequencies of the low percussion and strings already present in the mix. Here's how the percussive pulse sounds on its own. And here's how the entire mix sounds. These two work especially well at the last section of the track where all hell breaks loose. I find that they provide a very nice bed and help drive the track forward without overpowering the already dense mix. we finally get to the one million dollar question. Is Signal worth investing in? Since I wasn't born inside the Onassi family, although I am Greek, yes I come from the land of Uzo and Ella and all that jazz. Anyway, before spending my hard-earned money on a new library, I set two criteria. Versatility and what I like to call incorporatability, which I know it's not a real word, but let me explain what I mean here. Some libraries sound wonderful on their own, but as soon as you try to combine them with other sounds in a composition or incorporate them into your already existing template, you need to do a lot of massaging in order to get them to sit well in the mix and not mask everything else. Well, Signal is not one of these libraries. Yes, it does have certain sounds that are so great that benefit from being heard with a minimal accompaniment or even solo but most of the sounds can be easily incorporated into already dense orchestrations or pre-existing template. The other criterion I usually consider in a library is how versatile it is. And Signal is incredibly versatile. Don't be fooled by its dark interface. It can create anything from dark, disturbing and epic to light, ambient and even highly emotional sounds. Given the wealth of the recorded sound sources, the variety of ways in which these can be combined, and the numerous effects available to shape your personal sound, you literally have thousands of choices for pulsing sounds alone. Now add to this the fact that you can disable the pulse engine and use signal as a synth, and well, you do the math. So if you're waiting for me to spell it out for you, well, yes, in my opinion, signal is definitely worth adding to your arsenal. It's an incredibly versatile, highly usable library at a very fair price and you will find a ton of users in your studio and it's highly, highly recommended. <laughs>